The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. We the believers of this church age, being given the greatest privileges of all time to be controlled of the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, and to walk in the Spirit, is of great importance than anything else the history could know. Never in the past nor in the future will be given to each and every believer this great privilege of to be living in the Spirit and to walk in the Spirit and to live and to yield the fruit of the Spirit. At the same time, Never in any of the believers' dispensations what we can look from the time of Adam till to the last millennium believers. So much grieving and squelching of Lord God the Holy Spirit as we could note in this church age. If it were not so much of grieving and squelching and lying to Lord God the Holy Spirit, then the church age wouldn't have ended up in apostasy. The apostasy period which is going through the deliberate rejection of biblical truth in the pulpit by false teachers at the same time who do not want to endure some doctrine is really a pathetic note that we note in the churches today. Sound doctrine demands dispensations. Sound doctrine demands isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation of the word. Sound doctrine demands the word of the Lord to be explained as it is from the original languages of the scriptures. Though you take it literally, figuratively, figuratively allegorically, or you apply it to your, to your principles spiritually to correct your life. But dear brethren, the men that we get along in churches today are not the true faithful ones, but rather they are wicked ones who have lost the truth of Bible doctrine. In the funeral dirge of Psalms 119, when they were going, they were remembering the importance of the word of the Lord and the blessings and the cursings which would follow if they would reject the word of truth. Even after such a revival in 1929 in America, the people who realized during the Depression time that it should be Bible doctrine, they went back and gave number one criteria for the word of the Lord. Today, the times of end where we are going through, not particularly end, but the perilous times where the people have rejected the word of the Lord. The technology may replace them for the health point of view, where with their thinking they can really work out, but it will be an utter failure because it is Lord who has everything in his hand to take a breath, to keep you happy, to keep you healthy, to keep you fit, Lord knows what it is. It is not by strength nor by power, but by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that we are going to sustain and valiantly do the work of Jehovah in this earth. You cannot tell that I am physically fit, I am mentally fit, I don't have any diseases at all, so I can do the works of Lord, no. Lord controls the things. Lord is the history. And in that history, when Lord has given to each and every believer a certain grace, and we need to live a life of worth in that grace, it's been really grieving the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that we don't walk in the fellowship of Him in the partaking of living fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but rather we are walking in our own human mental imaginations which cannot do anything or which can have not have any role into the concerning of the truth. Dear brethren, we need to be much thankful to the grace of our Lord that He has graciously bestowed, that we are enjoying the truth of life in our, life, in our hands, to the praise of His glory and His grace. And we are literally giving those things which we do not deserve. Lord has made us to be joint head takers, joint part takers, which are the destiny of Christ, the royalty of Christ, the heirship of Christ, the sonship of Christ, the eternal life of Christ, the righteousness of our Lord. But what are we doing? Ending up in apostasy. 
deliberate rejection of Bible truth in the pulpit, deliberate rejection of exegesis in the pulpit, deliberate rejection of sound doctrine in the pulpit. Replacing sound doctrine as per the reaching years desire and which is good for nothing. Not having proper definition at all what is the word of the Lord. Not having any importance at all what it is the Bible doctrine for us given for us in eternity past to handle the truth accurately. Not having the importance of the gift of a pastor teacher whose work is to exegete the word. And dear brethren, how much pathetic we will be at the judgment seat of Christ. Just imagine. The more we neglect the word of the Lord, the more we reject Bible doctrine, the more we follow into our own traps rather than learning the word of the Lord more accurately, the more will be we dishonoring our Lord. And at the judgment seat of Christ, Israelites, the Queen of Sheba, the Ninevites may tell how foolish you were not to go through the Enlightenment Ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We were having the endowment ministry only on certain few, like the prophet Jonah who went and told to the people of Ninevites they repented and they changed their paths, and God repented the evil for them that changed his mind. But when we are having the enlightenment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, why can't we repent our mind, change our mind to learn Bible doctrine and give number one criteria for the original language of the scriptures to be communicated in the pulpits? How many days more we think we can survive by changing the technology and to the point of we renovate or get back to our original life as well as the things which they think that they can really live for immortality in this earth itself? Your philosophical trends, your scientific phenomena, just throw them out. They don't have nothing to be done with the Christ or with the Bible doctrine, dear brethren. Whatever we do have, we do have very simple in the word of the Lord. And we need to follow that everything is there in God's hand. It is he who is going to direct our paths. Man may devise many things, but Lord knows where he has to send them. Because we find the technological end today, people coming around, not able to have fear when our Lord corrects them, when our Lord tries to tell them by chastisement, the first thing, when you ignore the word of the Lord, the chastisement is for you, the health point of view, which will be distorted. And you know what? They want to elevate that suffering of distortion, which Lord has given for you as a punishment, because you are rejecting the word of the Lord. You are not giving number one criteria for the word of the Lord. And they want to tell, Lord will bless you with the good health. You come to my meetings, and Holy Spirit will come upon you mightily, and you will have joy and peace. When Lord God, the Holy Spirit is indwelling in you, from where will he come upon you mightily again, so that you can have joy and peace? You know, open your mind, open your eyes, and look upon the word of the Lord and read. Because of your negligence, the first five cycles of disciplines which have been told in the funeral judge for those people, they were remembering it. The first one, it will hit upon their economical disaster as well as their health. The health viewpoint will be absolutely destroyed. But they don't want to correct those things. They want to listen to those things. They want to think which the Holy Spirit has given to them as a gift. They can do miracles or healings and elevate the suffering, which is not the plan of God at all. Not at all. Why Lord is chastising you with ill health? So that you can correct and come back to learn the word of the Lord. Have you not known Lord is going to put you in the bed as one of the Old Testament prophet tells to us? Why? So that you could be corrected, you could be chastised, you could be coming back again to know the word of the Lord in truth. And if the faith miracular healers, they are telling they have the power to heal you at one end. On the other end, you are having the scientific end where the pastors are following like the Roman Catholic trends. Yes, it might be that when we go for genome technology, the problems could be solved. The nanotechnology can yield us the fruits. Morons not able to correct themselves and give number one criteria for Bible doctrine again in their lives and in their spirit. Your inner man sustains upon Bible doctrine, not upon such kind of a stupid deeds. 
And for you who are scientific phenomena, you think there is no inner man because I know very well you will be telling to yourself very clearly, very loudly, the words which our Lord spoke, their spirit, and after our die, there will be a soul sleep, or the spirit, the words which came back, they go back to the heaven, so there is no real human being again. Total distortion of the scriptures to be understood properly, the one who are unstable and unlearned, as per the doctrine of dispensations as well. They are unstable and unlearned not to know the reality of the rich man and the Lazarus. They are unstable to learn and to know the things that have been pertaining in the heaven as per Revelation 4, 5 and 6. The interlude passage is what we can find. And the event, the great fact written for us in Isaiah 66, 22 to 24. They don't believe those things because they say it is a soul sleep. They don't believe the very words of my Lord which has told for them in John 3, 18, already condemned if they do not believe upon my Christ. They will be put into the lake of fire. Or Hades or tormentors, whatever we can call to them in the terminology what we can use. But all will be raised at the white throne judgment and those who do not believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be put into the permanent lake of fire with Satan and its angels. No more any accusation or claiming or challenging the character of Christ by Satan. To resolve that character of Christ which has been impugned or challenged is the result of this human history and the renovation of this heaven and the earth. But this man, they never want to know the truth. We do know very well. They're arrogant. And they think they can get along those things which their mind is happy and their thinking is correct. Dear brethren, know the truth. The truth shall set you free. It is not through your scientific speculations you can change. It is not through medicine you can get back to more immortality. When you have been hit with a disease, try to know that you have been chastised by the Lord to correct your paths. And that meant to say you are neglecting the word of the Lord as number one criteria. Do not try to follow the artificial solutions of medicine like the Cadillo, Cryonics or XYZ, what the world is looking around through Illuminati trend or Freemasonry. You are not of this world to be worried in this world what the world will happen. Though you are in this world, you need to represent Christ. The knowledge and the fragments of Him, the essence of your life has to be Christ. And to know the knowledge and the fragments and the essence of our life, we need to learn Bible doctrine, without which it is not possible for us to please that great law. So, dear brethren, in this unique dispensation of the church age, you have been given to humble yourself. Though you have been given great information of all time, with humbleness and humility, you need to go back and learn the word of the Lord more clearly, more diligently, more accurately, rather than wasting our time in useless and worthless things of speculations, particularly the eschatological events, wherewith we do find today the whole trend of the church, looking upon the end times rather than realizing the truth, what it has been given for us right now in the Christian way of mechanics, in learning and growing up to the praise of His glory, through the edification process of the soul, from the original languages of the scriptures, when we inculcate the truth. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. In the next step, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the whole spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.